Hey, Michael. Yes, you're me. What have you done today to make you feel proud? Bloop, boop, boop. Bloop, doop, doop. Bloop, doop, doop, doop. I slept in. <laughs> well, that's really cool. I've done nothing. Why? Because it's not Pride Month while we're recording this, but it will be when you're watching this. Happy Pride. Very nice. <laughs> Both Mask and Musk. All right. So welcome, everybody, to our Pride video for this year. Um, your two resident queers in this video. Um, today, we are talking about queer video game characters that we've already covered on the channel. Quick word about the word queer. Um, we know not everyone likes the word, but we mean this as a loving, welcoming, big umbrella, big tent type of thing. We're a little bit late to jump on this trend, but we are going to do one of these <laughs> tier makers. All right, so we have got a whole bunch of characters here on the bottom. Not all of us are familiar with all of the characters, but we can talk about them as we go through. Our categories are pretty obviously queer, and we're here for it. Give strong queer vibes. Maybe queer. It's a stretch to call them queer and bad representation. So if if they are queer, it's not for a good reason. Or we're upset that the game developers may have given them some queer traits to make them less likable of a character, which happens more often in movies than it does in video games, but it happens. I'm very curious to see how some of these are queer. <laughs> some of them were definitely a stretch. <laughs> I agree with most of them. I've been yeah. curious to see some of them. You might say I'm bi curious. Oh, I yeah. wouldn't. Let's jump right in. Alice from Fantasy Star 4. I'm going to start right off by saying I think she's a stretch. I added her because I wanted some more uh, female characters in this. She is a physically strong female character. She's kind of stoic and she doesn't have any love interest throughout the game. She's a really cool character, though, and I would like it if she were canon queer, but I think this is a stretch. As someone who has never played Fantasy Star, I can safely say that she's giving me mild, late 80s, welder lesbian vibes. Yeah, yeah. It's it's serving mullet, and I'm here for it, but, like, you might find out later that, no, her husband just works at Home Depot. Okay, next we've got Birdo. Now, Birdo is a fun one because Birdo is canonically trans. In the Japanese manual for the first game she appeared in, uh, I'm not sure if this is in the manual for Doki Doki Panic or if this is in the manual for Mario Brothers 2, the, the American version of Mario Brothers 2 that was then put in Japanese later. But in the manual for that first appearance in Japanese, they say of the character, he thinks she's a girl. But then in every other appearance in Nintendo's writing, they use she, her pronouns. So... Birdo canonically trans, and I'm here for it. Anyone watching, please, if you have different opinions on any of these characters or if there are any that we miss, please let us know because we only have our experiences that we can go on and we can't speak for everybody. Like a lot of queer people, we have to find our own representation in media since it's usually not explicitly there, especially from this era. So we're just taking part in an age old practice of this. <laughs> okay, Princess Daisy, what are your thoughts, Ramin? I feel like it's a stretch. I think just because she, wait, has she ever been canonically mashed up with someone? Like, is she Luigi's thing? Like, Peach is Mario's thing? Okay. Then um, I feel like she might not be queer. She might just be single. Yeah. Um, in, in the Super Mario Brothers manga, she does compete for Mario a little bit, but then she just kind of gives up. I only included her just to have another woman on here, but also um, she is kind of like a tomboy princess, which is rejecting her ultra femininity to some degree. But uh, yeah, I think it's a stretch as well. All right, next we've got Adea. Adea is kind of a drag queen, but she's a woman playing up her feminine side super a lot. I don't know, what do you think? There is a movement, especially in recent years to like legitimize anybody of any gender being allowed to be any kind of drag. The first thought in my brain that comes to mind is trans people, but of course trans people have are basically like responsible for the art of drag. Like, I mean, they're so pivotal, even though we're only just, unfortunately just now seeing acceptance for it. But we are seeing acceptance for like cis female drag queens. I can't decide if I'm making this justification out of a desire for better representation or just because I fucking love Adea and I really want to put her at the top of the tier just because I'm obsessed with her. So I'm going to compromise and say strong vibes. I think that sounds right. Yeah, let's give her strong vibes. Okay, 
X death a little bit more of a stretch, I think. I included him because he is like big burly guy, but is a magician and is wearing like a really fancy outfit with lots of frills to it. And that juxtaposition of traditionally masculine and traditionally feminine sort of gives me like bearded drag queen vibes. Also, in a lot of his animations of his sprite in the game, he's doing like twirls and stuff like that. It's interesting because in Japan, many of the most harmful stereotypes about gay men are kind of the opposite as they are in America because like the Japanese, one of the most pervasive stereotypes in Japan for gay men is ultra masculine, is ultra muscular. Like, I mean, we're going to get to them later, but the gym guys in Final Fantasy VII are a perfect example. Having said that, though, I feel like x Step is kind of a stretch. How about we compromise and put him in maybe? Just, be just because he doesn't have any emotional attachment in any way to any characters. But also, I just kind of want to fill up maybe a little bit. We can, we can change our mind sure. later. Yeah, we can. Also, <laughs> I just realized what an opportunity we missed in not calling the middle category Call Me Maybe. <laughs> we can ch we can change that. <laughs> Call me Gaby. No. All right, Ferris, Faris. I say Ferris, you say Faris. Let's call the whole thing off. What uh, do you think about her? Absolutely pretty obvious. Uh, wait, doesn't the game at one point set her up with a dude or no? Am I making that up? No. You know what I'm thinking of? It's how she becomes more feminine later when she like realizes she's a princess. But nah, Ferris is top tier lesbo vibes and i love and, her for it and she also hates in being dressed up like a girl and like tries to escape as soon as she can yeah okay the gym guys from final fantasy 7 they're pretty obvious but is this bad representation or not absolutely it is bad representation um the good news is by the final fantasy 7 remake they completely redid them and the queer too long didn't read the, the queer representation in the 2022 or whenever that came out version of Final Fantasy VII is way better, but not this one. I'm not sure it's bad representation. They are there for laughs, but if we as queer people ignore the laughs, there's nothing that it that they're doing that is wrong or bad. They like working out and they like wearing pretty things. And there's nothing wrong about that is, uh, unless you buy into the joke about it. Like, unless they're, unless you buy into them being the butt of the joke about it. Wasn't there a moment, though, in the scene where, like, the camera cuts away and it's implied that Cloud is being essayed by them? I don't remember that. It's possible. Um, okay, well, I, we'll, we'll just go with bad rap. That's fine. Okay, next we have Hein from Final Fantasy III. He's sort of like x -Death. He He's also not a character for very, for very long, but he's just a skeleton wizard in fabulous clothes. So like x -Death, I'm feeling, call me maybe. Yeah. Isaru. So I would say yes, but I actually think there's a better, the best case for Isaru being queer, I would say is actually being ace. I feel like he might be strong asexual vibes. Unlike the other summoners in the game, he's so committed to his summoning pilgrimage, like to the point where, spoiler alert, he does some problematic stuff. He develops hardly any relationship with any other characters except for his family members. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not trying to imply that asexual people don't have good friendships and relationships with people uh, and romantic relationships too. But I'm just saying most of the other characters in that game end up with somebody. Like even Donna, who is like the closest comparable NPC to him. So yeah, I'm going to say strong vibes. Okay, I can buy that. I was thinking maybe, but I think I think you've made a, case, a good ace case. And uh, I had Donna on this list as well too. But honestly, part of the reason that I cut her is that the crop was so bad. It was like just from like the bottom of her panties to the top of her chest. I'm like, that's just too creepy. I can't include this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next we have Jade from Breath of Fire 1. I'm just gonna say this one's a stretch. If he does give anyone queer vibes, he's probably the bad rep type of queer. Um, I don't know, he's he's just pretty boy, evil, manipulative. So I think stretch or bad rep. Okay, now we've got Jeff. This is another one where I can't decide if it's pretty obvious because I want it to be or because it is. I mean, we'll get to later the one from Earthbound that is pretty obvious, but 
I'm going to go with strong vibes. I don't know why, but for some reason, I kind of like the idea of the thing between him and the other character being unrequited. I don't know why I like it. I do. For that reason, I was thinking maybe. Okay, I could I could go to Call Me Maybe. Yeah. Like, it's clear that they're at least very good friends, but uh, we don't really know how Jeff feels about the other character. But also, we don't really know how Jeff feels about anybody. This next one's interesting. Kane from Final Fantasy IV. So I included this one because it's in the script that he has the hots for Rosa, but I don't know. There's something about all of his personality that he seems to also have the hots for Cecil a little bit. He gives me bi vibes. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I've never, ever considered him queer, but now that you say it, I kind of really love it. So mm -hmm. I say strong vibes. Yeah. Me. Okay, this one, another person cut off, but at least he's fully clothed. This is Kato from Live Alive. Um, I basically just want him to be gay. <laughs> He's so sweet and nurturing and gentle. There's a robot main character of one of the storylines. He's the creator of the robot. And he's just so sweet and gentle with the robot. And his voice actor is really good, too. He keeps on calling the robot Little One. It's like, oh, hello there, Little One. So good to see you. <laughs> it's, I just want him to be my partner, basically. Um, but I don't think there's enough to really put him anywhere, but maybe. So I'm gonna now I really want to play Live Alive. It's fun. Uh, well, it's hit or miss fun. That chapter is incredible. Yeah, I remember. Um, and the end is very good. Um, and there are a couple other chapters that are incredible, but there's a lot of the rest of them are just fine. Okay, Kafka. Even though I love him so much, he's definitely my favorite Final Fantasy villain. I'm still kind of thinking bad rep. Like, I feel like all the queer signifiers they put onto him were clearly put there for the sole purpose of making him more despicable to the average audience, which is like, you know, poster child for bad rep. Yep, that's exactly what I was thinking. Kafka, bad rap. Love the character for everything but queer as evil. <laughs> yes. Ooh, also, this is the point in the list where it's symmetrical if you cut it in the middle of the cross. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> All right, Kiros, we already made a joke about Kiros. <laughs> what do you think about Kiros? Um, I don't know why, but the first thing that really comes to my head is either like trans man or lesbian more than gay guy i don't know why i don't know i feel like it's just a stretch Mo mostly just because his character is pretty underdeveloped in the grand scheme of things okay i'm fine with the stretch um i was thinking maybe but I, i'm fine with the stretch next we have link but i specifically chose link from link's awakening and my thought about this is less about specifically link but more about link's awakening that game i don't know how to explain it but it has a certain melancholy queer longing to it. I, I can't really put my finger on why I feel this way about that game. Everything is just like so dreamy and kind of sad. Yeah, that's an interesting take. I mean, you also played the remaster, which visually looks really different from the one I played, the original Game Boy one. Uh, but even so, I can, I've never had that thought. But now that you put it that way almost like you've created this whole inner world which i think a lot of queer people kind of have to do in their early lives to survive trauma yeah i don't know i'm gonna let you decide this one because i'm still i think i need some more time to process that theory okay well then let's put him in maybe for now and we can change our mind later if we decide to okay luigi i would say definitely not obvious or strong vibes yeah and definitely not bad representation no, I would say, if anything, again, Ace, only because, like, I can't even really think of a game where he even exhibits any romantic desire for anyone. I haven't played Luigi's Imagine or any of the Mario and Luigi games, yeah. um, so maybe there is something. If there is any romantic relationship that Luigi expresses an interest in, I doubt Nintendo would do anything other than heterosexual relationship for Luigi. Yeah. If I really sit here and think about it, outside of uh, Mario, Peach, and Bowser, you could kind of make the case that everyone in Mario games is asexual only because the games are like so G-rated. Yeah, yeah. Um, So I'm feeling a stretch. Okay. Now, Mario, but I specifically chose Tanuki Mario. And my reasoning for this 
is that Mario is a furry and furries are of the ones I've had interactions with. They seem to be the most welcoming, the most open-minded people. So I bet you Tanuki Mario has tried some stuff at least. But it's a stretch. Yeah, it is. <laughs> okay, this is Ox from Breath of Fire 1. So he's a big burly guy and wears like just Speedos. Um, I need to play Breath of Fire 1. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to put somebody from most of the games that we've played. So I uh, yeah, stretch. Okay, Palmer from Final Fantasy 7. I was thinking sort of a bad representation. I could see the creators wanting him to be like that sort of prissy type as part of what makes him villainous. Uh, he likes the finer things. He overeats, stuff like that. Yeah, the the struggle I'm having with this one is just that there are certain tropes that are both traditionally viewed as harmful stereotypes about gay people and just anime tropes. Like acting cutesy is really common in anime, even if we also associate it sometimes with harmful stereotypes about gay men. So I don't know which one this really fits under, although my gut is telling me that even though the devs have a lot to answer for in earlier Final Fantasy titles. This isn't one of the things I would put in that list. But if we're going to put him on this tier maker at all, it is bad rep. Yeah, I hadn't thought of it that way. But um, since there is nowhere else to put him, I guess we'll just have to put him there. If um, anything, I would say he's more bad rep of fat representation and fat. Definitely fighting. that. Yeah, definitely that. He's He's a problematic character, no matter how you slice it. Okay, next we have Ray from Breath of Fire 2. Ray is a, uh, let's say, villain character, um, but he was adopted by the church and fed a whole bunch of lies and created to be someone that he is not and he's hiding his true self. If that's not strong vibes, <laughs> he's a very good character. He eventually comes around um, after you finally defeat him in battle. What you learn about him is that he's part of the dragon clan and like everyone thinks that everyone from the dragon clan is dead except for Ryu. But then you eventually find that Ryu's sister is alive and that Rei is from the dragon clan. So that's sort of like, he sort of like comes out as being from the dragon clan. Okay, Rufus from Final Fantasy VII. I feel like it's a stretch. Okay. Um, yeah, again, maybe Ace, but I feel like it starts to be a weird pattern if we are labeling every character who just never has a romance scene in the game as ace. The next is Rune from Fantasy Star 4. He's a fantastic character. That's P-H-A, fantastic. Uh, yeah, um, but he's a stretch. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't remember what my thinking was when I made this. I made this list very late at night one night. <laughs> okay, next we've got Saban from Final Fantasy VI. And if nothing but wishful thinking... I want to put him in strong vibes. So my reasoning, he calls himself a bear. <laughs> uh, but also he's just like so gentle and supportive and sweet. Um, he occasionally can like let his temper get the better of him. But for the most part, he's like just the most supportive brother. And that's really the only relationship we see him in. But I also wonder if like, of course, the creators didn't have this in mind. But in my head canon. Part of him not wanting to lead the kingdom alongside his brother was him wanting to go off and be his true self, which is basically what the game says. But what if that true self is something that he doesn't really feel comfortable sharing with everyone? I also just minor point to add, it's fun to consider him being gay as a foil to his brother being a womanizer. Yeah, yeah. So... This is wishful thinking, strong vibes, but it gives me strong vibes. <laughs> hey, Seymour. Oh, bad rep. Like, I want to like him as a villain because it's my favorite Final Fantasy and because I like his character design visually, but he's just a really confused character. Like, he yeah. wants to marry Yuna, but he also wants to kill Yuna, but he also wants to be Yuna. But he also, like, wants to be, like, it's just, I think the issue with Seymour is he's, like, the, I mean, I should, probably should have spoiler warned before I just said all that. But more spoiler warnings, he is the um, sort of the fake villain of the game. Like, 
until you discover the truth about sin, which I won't spoil. And the issue is that like the writers are trying to tie too many other plot threads around him to sort of help string you along until you find out the secret. And it just, it, it doesn't work. Yeah, I agree. Okay, next we have Spar from Breath of Fire 2. Spar is gender fluid. So Spar is introduced as male, and when I, when people talk about him, they say he, him pronouns, but there's this mechanic in Breath of Fire 2 where you can spiritually fuse your party members with these shamans. And if you fuse Spar with the water shaman, he becomes female and everyone uses she, her pronouns for her then. So pretty obvious gender fluid. And I'm here for it. <laughs> yeah. Then we have Tony. I mean, pretty obvious. Like, yeah. the game isn't even subtle about it. No. And he is such a good character, even though we see him so little. I, but, I, but I also just, like, feel for him a lot. Yeah, you know, there's been some stuff said in recent years about, like, a movement away from the sad gay tropes and, like, trying to create more joyful gay characters. But I, I do still think there's a space for it. And I also think that, like, the real reason why I think both of us probably feel for him is that he's got that unrequited love going, but he never really shows his pain about it. Like, he's such a good sport about the fact that he is never going to get with <laughs> Jeff. Well, we don't know about never, but Jeff does stay in Saturn Valley. Is that right? At the end of the game? I think so. Working with Dr. Andonuts, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Next one's sort of a weird one, Yoshi. When games talk about Yoshi they use he him for Yoshi but there's a whole race of Yoshis and they all lay eggs so that's kind of giving me like doesn't fit into human categories because he's not but I don't know that's that that could be implying that all Yoshis can be any gender yeah it's sort of how I feel about it I get what you're saying however I think that something we should take into account in this list is what was clearly the dev's intent? Like most of these pretty obvious at the top, it's clear that the devs intended to at least make some kind of statement. But with Yoshi, I would I would put it in I'm torn between strong vibes and call me maybe. I think maybe. Okay. If nothing else, then I I want that to be the biggest category. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Zeza from Final Fantasy V. I was basing this based on uh, just on his um, Amano sketch of uh, how freely and ornamented he is. I know that's just Amano's style, but I don't know. He's like one of the four Dawn heroes, and I don't think the game makes any reference to him being a father or anything like that, like they do with the others. Another maybe? Yeah, I think maybe. Okay, next is Rand from Breath of Fire 2. I'm just going to come right out and say it's a, uh, it's a maybe. But um, Rand, like Ox from Breath of Fire 1, is the like big, gentle, strong guy. But when you first meet Rand, Ryu is using the fake name Baba um, to join a tournament. And Rand says, oh, you're Baba? I was expecting a weird looking guy, not a guy with a cute face like you. So, but also Breath of Fire 2 has a notoriously bad translation. Uh, so that could just be something that made more sense in Japanese than it does in English. But since we don't know for sure otherwise, I kind of just want to put him in maybe. Well, I don't know. Hold on a minute. Because we put Sabin in strong vibes, right? And yeah. We had, I would say we had less evidence for that than what you just gave for this character. Okay, I'll buy that. Okay, I'll, I'll put him in strong vibes. Breath of Fire 2 with the queer representation. Okay, now it's uh, your character from Fire Emblem something. Yeah, Ramin from Fire Emblem. No, <laughs> uh, Leon from Fire Emblem Gaiden is an interesting case because Gaiden was remade years later as the DS game Fire Emblem Echoes. And it wasn't just a remaster. Like, they expanded a lot of stuff. And his character is one of those things. So in both games, your party meets him while you're on the road because he's part of a mercenary crew that you happen to save in a battle and then they join you. And in his mercenary crew is led by a guy named Valbar. And in the original, 
well, in both games, he is like super close with Valbar. Like he calls him his bro in the original, and like when he says brother in the original, it's it's clearly like kinship kind of thing, you know. But in the remake, uh, he is very blunt about the fact that he is gay. Like he talks about how Valbar is the most beautiful man he's ever met and how he wants to die for him. And he's very open about the fact that he knows Valbar is not into him like that and that's okay. He also regularly in the remake, like thinks other men are hitting on him. So this one's, this one's interesting. I mean, I really, I've only played the remake uh, and, and read some stuff about the original. I really want to say Leon's pretty obvious just because I played that version of him and also because I I just really like his character. He's really cool. But I I guess if we're going with the original version of the game, it's probably fairer to put him in strong vibes. I wouldn't be against putting him in pretty obvious for the same reason that I put Link's Awakening Link in maybe. It would be a stretch if it were just the Game Boy version, but because of the remake, we, we bumped him up to maybe. Yeah, let's put him in pretty obvious. Okay. Then we've got Toad, like Yoshi, another interesting case. I, it's sort of like a Smurfs thing. Like there's only one female Toad. There's only one Toadette and a whole bunch of male Toads. And there's only one Smurfette and many, many male Smurfs. And I saw somebody talking about how Toad might work in something online. I can't remember where it is. If I can, If I find it, I'll link it in the description, but I probably won't, about how there are a lot of animals that can change their sexual organs as needed for procreation. And they were wondering if the toad race were like that. Like, if there is no toadette, any toad can become toadette. <laughs> Again, that's sort of outside of the human view of this. And this is also just like people on the internet's headcanon. It's not written in any Nintendo official lore. So that right there kind of makes it a stretch. But I think it's kind of a fun thing to compare that to human sexuality and someone being non-binary and or gender fluid. So I'm going to put him in stretch. Okay. Looking at all these, is there anything that we want to change? Um, I think all the pretty obviouses should stay. I'm not going to bother with like putting the strongest case for each one all the way to the left, I don't think. That would just take too long. Yeah. Um, I might bump... Got down to a stretch. I'm not against that. I don't really see anything else that jumps out at me. Okay, me either. All right, so yeah, everyone watching, let us know what you think. Are there any characters from the games that we've discussed that we missed that we think sh that you think should be in here, or any other games from 1985 to 1994 that should be on this list that we didn't think about? Uh, yeah, let us know in the comments. I'm curious to read what everyone's thinking about these things. Okay, yeah, that's right. Ramin, you haven't been in a video with our new end card now. So to my left of Ramin, uh, that would be the <sighs> mirrored videos. Okay, this side of Ramin, there'll be a video that uh, YouTube thinks you might like next. So give that a click if you want to check something out. Up there <laughs> on that side of Ramin, There'll be the button to follow our channel if you're interested in that. Uh, please give this video a like if you liked it. Give it a pity like if you didn't like it. Write me a love sonnet. And also, um, yeah, maintain your groovy selves. See you all next time.